Mary Bad, how are you doing? Good, how are you? I'm pretty good. So, what would you like to talk about tonight? Well, I thought it was pretty interesting that in the cycle of all this scheduling and uh, stuff that you and I have talked about in the past, uh, today is actually the day that I have in my phone that pops up the reminder that says, "How is Jeff is how how is Jeff doing?" <laughs> <laughs> so that's the habit, a habit and, you know, that came out of a conversation that you and I had uh, that was, I think, primarily focused on this concept that I'm trying to figure out how to integrate uh, more coaching into my career and transition to have less clinical work in my career. Um, and um so I want to thank you for helping me create that habit and and kind of create it in a way that became quite self-sustaining. Remind me what the goals were that you set. Yeah, so um what I some of it was I think we did it while I was uh recovering from my back surgery and uh so I had a uh sort of a check-in. So that's the concept. Uh, how is Jeff doing? So the check-in that occurs every six weeks is, you know, how's my back? What's the level of sciatica? Um, how well am I doing with stretching and strengthening? And at the time it was kind of, am I allowing my back to heal or recover? Um, and that worked well. Now I, I think I'm beyond the healing and recovery phase, but now I'm in the maintaining my back. And yes, there's still always issues because even as I sit here right now, my foot is partially numb, but, <laughs> but I'd rather have the numbness than the pain. So <laughs> <laughs> I'll take <it> too. <laughs> um, and then I had um, kind of, um, like I said, kind of a check-in on my trajectory of the coaching. And I think one of the questions that you helped me come up with was um, kind of, you know, what do I want to be asking myself? Right. So, um, and it was, um, how am I doing? And I think there's a sense of that. Is it feel like it's in the right trajectory? Cause I know it's not a snap of the fingers, right. That you can't just wish this stuff to happen. So, um, you know, as I reflecting on it today, I'm, I'm very content. Um, definitely there's a ton of growth on the, on the coaching side. I think probably if I were to reflect currently, um, I'm probably in a phase where I'm not super happy with my clinical volume because it's December and, I'm in charge of a call schedule. So I've had to pick up more days than I really wanted. So I'm probably deviating from my principles for, for the holidays. <laughs> so that's how it feels. It's going subjectively, but what about objectively? We have any yeah. targets that. Well, well the, ob the objective failure is the number of call days in the mm -hmm. month. <laughs> <laughs> Because that was that was sort of the objective measure was getting down to uh, probably eight days. And um, in my normal trajectory, I was hovering eight to nine. So feeling like that's pretty good success. Um, but like I said, in the last couple of months, that's probably been 10 or 11 days. Okay. Um, so from a, you know, from a clinical volume, I think I'm... I'm managing that really well. Like some of that's just the fortunate aspects of call not being out of control busy. Uh, but also just there's a lot of other things on the side that I've done to, you know, pass off cases when I need, um, just kind of schedule them when it's gonna work both for me and the patient versus the early part of my career where it was always like just as soon as possible to only benefit the patient and had no bearing on whether it was going to work well for me or not. <laughs> so in terms of what you're describing, your objective 
I don't want to say failures. I think that's too strong. Your, your up, uh, objective letdowns, let's say, over the past couple of months, what do you need to do to get back on track? Yeah, it's keep keep moving. You know, so I, I look at these as kind of uh, longer term goals in progress of things that include sort of strategizing what things will look like um, six months or a year from now. Um, sometimes it's um, the shorter, more intermediate term. Um, but 2023 looks really good. Um, so I'm excited about that. So that's why I'm not really uh, overly down about it. Um, and what else? Um, re restate your question for me. What do you need or, to do to get back on track to where you want to be with respect to clinical volume and call? Um, well, one thing that will help is that at the, I manage two call schedules. So at the end of this year, I only will be managing one. So um, there's kind of an unfortunate tradition that when you're in charge of the call schedule, if it's going to mess with anybody, you take the hit. So I won't be the guy taking the hit as much anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, um, and then just, I've, I've raised awareness that, uh, that, you know, in the general healthcare system, but even here locally, that um, we function in a model that is just enough physicians and surgeons and not a slight abundance. If anything, you're always in the, often in a slight deficiency. So I've been having conversations that raise the issue that we need to figure out how, how to, right now it works out well, but if any one person, uh, retires is out like because we've had some times where people recently have been out with COVID and it's like okay see I proved my point like people are picking this up but we there's no way we could sustain this for more than um you know the 10 days or a month um so we need a way to be able to have more people available to take call as my particular example I feel like one of the challenges we've spoken about directly and indirectly, I think, is about how do you, Jeff, manage your individual goals in the context of this system that you don't control, right? Like you've always had the challenge of trying to limit clinical volume in a situation where there's a lot of volume. I feel like this may fit in that same boat. Yeah, and I think what you're pointing out is that I think a lot of these things have complexity, right? Like you can come up with a simple solution, act like something simple uh, often, but there's often a reassessment of why it's, why it uh, doesn't work. Like I've made great steps going in the right direction. And uh, then you recognize that there's a different loophole that you weren't thinking about or expecting as to how you get tapped in. Maybe you, maybe I've become really good at saying no for extra cases when I really can't handle them, but then that doesn't control the cases that come in while I'm on call. So, you know, a lot of my practice was taking on extra cases. So I got good at that and you recognize a new loophole to the to the challenge and i'm not saying this happens all the time but it, it's pretty good it's pretty common with me that you recognize that there's other ways that lead you down the path of overworking or taking on too much um you know for a while like the reason i I got really good at saying no, because some things just didn't fit my passion. Well, when you create success in an area that you really enjoy doing, you all of a sudden can't use that as a criteria anymore, because a lot of things are falling on your plate that fit your passion. <laughs> so you recognize, okay, I need a new plan. And, and Ty kind of alluded to that earlier, where I'm 
I'm often making small modifications in my plan. In fact, what it, what it's making me think is that I haven't updated my questions in a while. And so maybe my next step is to look at my little checklist of how's Jeff doing and saying, are these really the questions that are most important for me to be reflecting on every six weeks? One minute left, move on. Okay. So that's a great point. So what do you think you need to reflect on now? Not necessarily the questions, but just the, the, the topics. Yeah, maybe it's both. Um, I do think it's a little bit the questions in some ways. So I think I'll do that exercise um, either in the next couple of days or in the next week or so um, of are these the most appropriate questions that I want to ask right now. And then I think, like you said, like I think you're alluding to, is it a, is it, other questions is it values what what were you kind of alluding to when you asked that well i was just I was wondering you know what topics do you think you need to address right because i think looking at well what questions should i ask is kind of it's a big pool <laughs> whereas if you think about well i don't need to be thinking about my back so much but i do need to be thinking yeah. about x Whatever. Action. Yeah, I think you're right. And that's kind of what was a little bit reflective in my checklist, because I was thinking, yeah, the I do want to maintain my back, but is the question a little bit different? And that topic and is the topic um, um, the percent of coaching or is it actually something a little bit different? Right. And in what. Um, are my near and intermediate term goals of, of what I'm trying to transition to. And, and, and fortunately for me, like in my situation, I don't think it's looking to do um, less of, maybe there's a little bit of doing less of things that I don't like or that I'm not wanting in my career or practice right now. But I think it's more of just prioritizing the things that um, uh, are on a higher level of like uh, fulfillment. Glad you said that because I wanted to challenge something that you said earlier. You said that when you think something is simple, it's actually more complex. But what if it's not more complex? It's a good point. <laughs> Sometimes I got to take all my complex thinking and simplify it. You're right about that. Thank you. Well, I think that you did, you just did, right? You said, I need to reprioritize. That's actually quite simple. I think, you know, when we assign complexity to things, it, it's a way of deferring, right? If something is, is more difficult or more complex than I thought, then that's also something that I need to deal with later. But perhaps re-simplifying it will make it more urgent for you. Yeah, so you're hitting some good buttons for some themes of how I recognize what I do procrastinate on, yes. <laughs> so that's a good good summary point, thank you. So let me stop you guys there because I think that was a very helpful coaching session in just a very short period of time. But um, Jeff, what just happened? Um. I mean, the, to me, like a couple of things, one is we just, in a way, just had a conversation. Um, but that conversation was very focused on Jeff, right? Me. And so it created this space for me to, within that conversation, kind of move anything forward with just little, um, um, you know, fantastic questions from from Muyabat, but me being able to stay in my space of integrating it to how I change and how I work and not necessarily feeling like I was being directed as to how to do it. It was more like, what are you trying to do? And again, they were great questions.
-hmm. And, and did you find that helpful? Yeah. So, I mean, I'll, um, one, it created a awesome space of just reflecting. Um, and then I also kind of, it, it helped the way Muyabat did it, or the way I kind of think about coaching, it allowed me to just kind of have a little bit of a checklist of things to do, which is really the more, you know, this is very productive in, or it's very uh, inspiring. It's very motivating. It's very um, helpful in kind of assessing the goals and maybe even some of the plans, but then there's the action point, which um, she helped me create like some things that I will do. And it, and it worked really well when we did it a long time ago. And I can't imagine that this isn't going to do the same thing. And we bought, what would be the follow-up process from the coach's perspective, either in the coming week, weeks, or before the next meeting or, or in the next coaching session? What would, what might that look like? Yeah, I would have ended this session with an assignment uh, for him to come up with that list of questions. And then that segues to the next session where we would follow up on that. Okay, great. Yeah, kind would, of a, my sense would be that knowing how she's done it before, it's like, um, what, what was it again that, you know, kind of confirming my commitment and then the follow-up is how did it go or how is it going? Um, and so it's that, um, reminder of the commitment and then kind of holding me, a, um, a bit accountable. Um, the coach kind of has to learn a little bit about the client to know what, what level of accountability and, and prompting that they, they're, they're looking for. And Mo Yubat's done that really well with me. Any other thoughts or comments from our client or coach? You know, I think the other part that we haven't touched on is that the client does come to the situation with a certain level of desired accountability, right? Mm. So a coach is generally, you know, a commitment, right? There's a time commitment you make to be coached. There's also a financial commitment. It's an investment. And because of that, you know, Jeff or any other client would kind of come into it with a certain level of desire to be held accountable as well. It's not, I don't think, you know, any of us would say the coach imposes that on the client and the client just accepts it. That's not really how it works, right? Like the co the client will show up to the relationship also desiring those things. So it really is a two-way relationship. 